somewhere far from town and people in a stable poor Jesus Christ was born of Mary in a cave obscure to seek him down trouble to Did you hear the angels' tidings? You can hear it still. If you bend his cave to enter, if you're of good will, to seek him, don't trouble, to Bethlehem. Bethlehem to go In silence you'll find him And in the poor next door In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with your spirit. spirit. Hearty welcome as we begin a new year today. Well, yesterday was the new year, but today's meeting in the little chapel. All of you, little sisters, happy new year, sisters, my dear sisters, wherever you are in India or abroad, my dear fathers, happy new year. And to families, hope we began the year well, happy new year. And to the children, God loves you, we love you. And the young adults also. Today is the Feast of Basil and Gregory. We'll speak about them in the homily. But uh, today is also Saturday, as we are. Just yes, yesterday was New Year. It hardly seems on us, 2021. 20, uh, and uh, there are many intentions here. I'd like you to pray. I'd like to pray for everybody, everybody participating, that they thank God for what's happened, ask God's blessings. That 21 will go much, much better. We're sure it'll then 20, all the trouble, problems we had, anxiety. Specifically, we have here a 25th anniversary on the 26th of January, uh, 26th of December, uh, pray for their jubilee. 13th wedding anniversary, 25th, praying for a permanent job. Birthday on the 24th of December, somebody asked to pray for me. Thank you so much. Then 24th of soul of Anthony Bernard Rodericks. Blessed by, with children, my sister is an agnostic, pray for her. Doc, daughter facing problems in marriage, redevelopment work of the building. Pray for father lost his eyesight. I'm a single mother in London. Pray for good health, financial celib Pray for my son who has his birthday had it on the 25th on Christmas Day. God's blessings and keeping us on the altar. We'll pray for the many, many intentions. Every Mass has got infinite value. We are applying every Mass is a reenactment of Calvary. And so we can pray especially. And I want for a moment we pray for ourselves. For the year thanking God, for the year 2020, praying for 2021. And so we turn to Jesus and say, You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give light to your church by the example and the teaching 
of the bishops St. Basil and Gregory, grant we pray that in humility we may learn your truth, practice it faithfully in charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response shall be, All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Kindly repeat. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. O sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. Our response, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. Our response, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. Our response, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Kindly stand as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. At many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed, did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Then they asked him, are you, what then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, then why are you baptizing? If you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me. The strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, once again, uh, we find so much of theology in these two readings. The first is from the Gospel of John. And the first reading is from the first letter of St. John. Same author, uh, rather clear, same style. And uh, the message is the same, that Jesus is God. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is God. The Messiah was sent, Christ is anointed, the anointed one, Messiah is the sent one, the promised one, the, and the, but then God. And this is what uh, the evangelist is consistently uh, insisting on right through the whole, uh, whole of his Gospels. It would be useful for us to know the context of what was happening. Uh, the Gospel passage, the context would happen in the, uh, Jesus said, not yet, or perhaps had just begun preaching, but then uh, they were the Sanhedrin's, and I've mentioned this before. This incident has come before in the gospel, and then they said that John is baptizing now with what authority? Who are you? You are acting very strangely, and therefore now uh, who are you? And he says, "I am the one preparing the way. I am the pre precursor." The first reading, uh, just, we keep that in the back of our mind, and we mull it and try to understand what Jesus what John is telling us but the first reading the context again is uh, heresies they were the people who are denying that Jesus uh, is the Christ uh, and therefore John uh, John is very very strong beloved who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ this is the Antichrist, denies the Father and the Son. Uh, then then you, the whole thing that you heard from the beginning, that if God abides in you, the Father will abide in you, the Son will abide in you. Uh, the, whole, the context here, again, is one context is some had begun to say even that uh, John the Baptist is the Messiah promised one. And we were saying that he's uh, had lots of followers. Jesus was of a different style preaching God's mercy. John, I said, pre preached God's uh, justice and saying that you've got, it. it's all one finally, but you've got to repent, change your lives, you sinning. And people were listening to him. Jesus was gentle in his approach consistently. Uh, here we have uh, people who were dividing the, that's why John, the letters were written. Uh, they were written uh, probably after the uh, gospel, uh, more or less. And there were the people who were saying that, uh, well, he is really uh, an important. This was the beginning of the heresies after which came in the church, which the the saints of today fought against, uh, Arianism, Gnosticism. Uh, they, now here the the whole thing was, uh, he is he cannot be God. Uh, how can uh, God have a son? Uh, they, they were imagining in, in human terms, and therefore this is not possible. Therefore, uh, he is a human person, and uh, Christ came into Jesus, the human person. And when he was on the cross, Christ left again, saying, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They took that text. And so there was a lot of discussion. And then uh, St. John is saying that these people are liars. They are the antichrists, these people who are... Uh, deceiving you, who are cheating you and saying that this is the treatment of Christ. Uh, it's so important, you know, in, in, the, in the history of the church, especially the early history, there were lots of heresies, people who do not fully understand. We've had the privilege in our time and age to have so many theologians, so many doctors of the church and fathers of the church who have grappled with these problems. It was not easy for them at that beginning time to understand everything. We have today, uh, there always was, the magisterium and the, it's so, it's well defined that this is the magisterium teaching of the church. We've got the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Council which have clarified things. And so, this moment, we are praying for these intentions, also pray for ourselves that we understand the mystery of Jesus more and more. The whole incarnation is a mystery. Whole of Christmas is a mystery. 
how can that little babe, helpless, not able to do anything for itself, with the babe is be really God, be the creator when it's, it's so difficult when we look from our human side. But it is true, that's what's, what God, Jesus came as a baby to grow up and give his life for us to save us. That's the incarnation, that's the mystery. And the saints of today, Basil and, and Gregory Nazianzen, they fought against these heresies. That's the great thing about them. Uh, two big heresies, they were both contemporaries. One was uh, uh, Bishop of Constantinople, uh, and then he became uh, Gregory Nazianzen, uh, Bishop of, that's why he was from Nazianzus, and uh, uh, Basil was Bishop of Caesarea. But uh, speaking of the heresies, there were two heresies. One heresy was that Arianism, they said that Jesus is the perfect man. He's good, very good, he's perfect, but he's not God, he's not God. God is above him, the Father is above him, the Son is below. That, and then uh, lots of people were following that. And both Basil and Gregory fought very strongly, preached even uh, princes and many families and armies and even bishops uh, went into that heresy. And so they had to condemn them. Uh, we had the, and then you have of course, the, the Council of Nicaea, which fought against this very strongly, 330 or so, around the time they were born. And then afterwards, there was the Gnosticism, which spoke of matter is bad. So his, Jesus' body was bad. He, the spirit was there. That was the divinity in him. They were saying, you know, Christ came to him. And uh, it's, it's abstruse, but uh, we need the church to teach us, to help us. We cannot understand everything ourselves. We can't understand the mysteries and the intricacies of mysteries. So uh, Basil and Gregory fought very strongly and stood firm and uh, people began to understand and follow them. Basil was known also as, uh, uh, he, lived, he began the, lived as a hermit, wanted a very simple life. So he went and lived alone and many people joined him, so he didn't want a community. So each of them lived his hermit life. And he made some rules on how to live, which Basil's, which are still followed in the Eastern Church, and the Orthodox Church still follows what he did. And St. Benedict, who began monasticism afterwards, uh, really, uh, Benedict uh, followed much of what Basil had begun. And Basil somehow is the patron saint, I was uh, reading about him, of hospital administrators, possibly he took care of uh, sick people, started hospitals, so, so happy feast to the hospital administrators. And Gregory, uh, he was uh, preached a lot and reflected a lot, and his, his writings are more mystical. And it's very interesting in his writing, he mentions that he loves uh, Basil very much. And he says, but I want to tell you, there's no jealousy between us. How, how do we work it out? He says, I want to do the best, the best in virtue, best in holiness. But when I see him, I want to give way to him. That way I, I feel we are like uh, two, uh, one soul in two bodies. We are they're just the same. We care for each other very much. Pray to, please pray to Basil and Gregory also, I will also, to enliven our minds, our hearts, to understand Jesus, understand the teachings of the incarnation, that we can be really more and more better disciples of Jesus. Happy feast to Gregory's, happy feast to all the Basils, happy feast uh, to each one of us as we are going on our journey beginning this new year. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept this sacrifice from your people, we pray, O Lord, and make what is offered for your glory in honor of Saints Basil and Gregory a means to our eternal salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor when our frailty is assumed by your word not only does human mortality receive an unending honor but by this wondrous union we too are made eternal so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you with joy we proclaim we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith savors savior of the Lord for by the cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with Saints Basil, Saint Gregory of Nazianzen, and all the church saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be quested on a life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence of the Father in words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. With the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress. Wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the, the power, power, and the glory are, are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ and your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace and unity, the goodness of their will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. sign of peace, Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, you're him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. The only say the word, my soul shall be. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Let us pray. 
may partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Saints Basil and Gregory, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation that you trace for us. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ended. Let's go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you once again for participating in the Eucharist. A very, um, it's, it's not wrong to say still Happy New Year to each one of you. All God's blessings, all God's blessings to each one of you. We'll pray for each other. Uh, today is the Saturday. And so this evening we'll have once again a prayer service preparing ourselves uh, for tomorrow. Tomorrow's the Epiphany. And the Father, Father Clifton Mendoza will lead us in prayer. He's posted over here in the cathedral and assistant. God bless you. Keep well and we'll see each other tomorrow. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Separate us from the love of Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? For in a manger of a cattle store, Christ was born to die for all. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Separate us from the love of Christ. A host of angels then proclaim this birth. Peace, goodwill to all on earth. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? To you was born. The mighty God who shall separate us from the love of Christ, who shall separate us from the love.